Keep Ooh. going, keep going. Yeah! Yeah. Uh, Are Helen, we live? Francis, of course we're live. What do you, what do you think we're doing? We're just, we're just clapping for fun. Mine says live soon. Yours says live soon. Wait, hold on, I'm going to turn this volume down before we even... Because this is just going to be... Welcome to Private Parts live stream, sponsored by ID Mobile. That was very professional of you. Out of character, I know. I feel like this is the best thing. So this is a live podcast that we're doing for ID Mobile. We've got a lovely audience. Hello, audience. Thank you so much for being here this evening. That is actually a live audience. We're sitting in a very lovely room. Um, yeah. We're having a very nice time, and we're completely live. But I feel like with the live podcast... It's How many times have you said live? Dude, I have no idea. I feel like we should make it clear that this is live. Yeah, I think, I think they get it. They might not know. They might not know it yet. I remember... That actually, this is true. What happened was is that... I knew we were doing a live podcast, but I didn't realize there was going to be a studio audience until I walked in the room and then saw everyone. I thought, this is weird that everyone's sitting here. And then I realized what we were doing. Yeah, because you don't read any of your emails or text messages. Yeah, or yeah I do. I do read any my of the planning. I do. I read it all. It was like, it was like I did this, um, did this TV show uh, called... Uh, in bragging. Ba- not bragging. How's that bragging? What, you don't want me to tell the story then? It's not Go bragging. Go on then. All right. What, because I did a TV show that's bragging. All right, you... Go on, tell your story. All right, I will. So I did a TV show, um, which is called In Bed With Jamie. Um, you probably watched it, didn't you? I don't know. Are you asking them? Or? Look, I'm, asking, I'm asking you. That's I was I'm in it. <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> yeah. So I'm asking the audience. But I didn't watch that episode, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I did this TV show called In Bed With Jamie, where basically I would, I would sort of interview different guests in bed. So I interviewed Pamela Anderson. Uh, but you don't know about Pamela Anderson. What? She's a glass blower. It's her hobby. She blows <laughs> glass. <laughs> a glass blower, yeah. <laughs> yes, she's a glass blower. A glass blower. Yeah, she's a glass blower. That's what yeah. she does as a hobby. Mm. Actually, another little interesting fact about her. You know, she first, she's Canadian. Did you know that? Yeah. You didn't know that? <laughs> don't just agree with me. You didn't yeah, I did know that. No, yeah. you didn't know that. No, I, knew, I knew everything about Pamela Okay, Anderson. fine. Where was, pa- where was Pamela Anderson found? Um... In the street. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's going. She picked up off the street and given her <laughs> her first role in Baywatch. <laughs> Wait, so hang on. How would the conversation she wasn't, go? I don't know if there's so any. How would the conversation go? If you think Pam Ranson was picked up in the street and given a role in no, Baywatch. She was maybe scouted on the street from. Oh, Playboy, wasn't it? <laughs> no, so that would have made her famous already. She wasn't famous at this point. Okay, so maybe it was. She. Maybe she was working at a drive through <laughs> I love how you're producer guessing. producer of Baywatch <laughs> yeah. was ordering something, and he um, came up to pick up his order. From Where? The which, which fast food place is it? Um, I, I can't remember. <laughs> you can't remember what happens in the story. I can't remember, <laughs> I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> and, um, and then he said, oh, have you got a job? She went, she went, no, I don't. I just, well, I do have a job because I'm working at a fast food place. <laughs> and he said, no, no, I meant like an acting job. I don't have an acting job, no. Are you Pamela Anderson now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm now Pamela Anderson How now. would she feel about that? What if I acted her? Well, I think she'd be, we, we're friends. I feel like we... are friends? Yeah, I feel like we are. I have her number. We're friends. Oh, we'll give her a call then. I'm not going to call Pamela Anderson. Well, well, I don't believe you have her number then. You're friends with lots of people. That you probably didn't have a number for. And that still makes you a friend. But I have her number that makes me more of a friend. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but she was actually... So Pam Anderson was found uh, at a football game, an American football game. Yes, so American football game. She was at the drive through in an American football game. <laughs> no. And the producer came along and said, oh, do you have a job? <laughs> no, because if you're working at a football game at the drive through you have a job. So why would he ask if, if she had a job or not? He meant for Baywatch. <laughs> okay, fine. No, she was working. She was, sorry, it wasn't working. She was at a American football game and the camera panned across the crowd and saw this very pretty girl sitting in the crowd and stopped on her and it was Pamela Anderson and then that's how she got her first commercial. Then she got a Coca-Cola job after that. Oh, ah, yes, that's right, yeah. 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 But anyway, I was doing this uh, TV show called In Bed With Jamie um, where I interviewed different guests in bed like Pamela Anderson and Francis Bull amongst lots of other great people mm. and uh, I then had to do this this thing which is uh, basically what happened tonight where they said they set up a bed inside a box so it was a, in, a, a big box inside Carnaby Street 
I was like, this is a bit weird. So I climbed inside this box, and this was like at three in the afternoon. They said, you're just going to have to sit in here for three hours. Really? What, what for? Well, because they wanted to make a big like opening of the show. <laughs> and the whole point was is this, 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 these walls would fall down, and there would be a bed in the middle of Carnaby Street. So and it was a would, publicity stunt. It's a publicity stunt, yeah. In box with Jamie. It, it, but it was in bed with Jamie, just the box was like the present around. And in I box, in bed with Jamie. In bed in boxing with Jamie. Mm. Yeah, well, the title was In Bed with Jamie, but mm. what? Potato, potato. It's confusing. Anyway, so this box, this bed was here, and I climbed in the bed at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And I got in there, and I waited three hours, and I could hear like all this like rustling going on on like the sides of like the, the, the bed and things outside the box. And they went three, two, one, and the present around me opened up and I kid you not there was about a thousand people (laughs) (laughs) watching me and I went hello (laughs) I wasn't planned or told that I had to do anything I just had to sit in this bed while a thousand people watched me and I think they were hoping for someone like Graham Norton (laughs) and and it opened up and it was that bloke from Made in Chelsea and they're like oh fuck this and just just walked off (laughs) wait someone like Graham Norton I don't know so like someone like Graham Norton or Graham Norton or someone else who else is like Graham Norton if you walked okay fine so if you walked into Carnaby Street if you walked into Carnaby Street like tonight so you leave this right now and you walk into Carnaby Street and you see a big present on the ground and someone goes up and says oh my god Graham Norton in there (laughs) is that is that or at least someone like him (laughs) who would you think oh that's quite cool for our podcast if you hear that siren that's the urban noise (laughs) it's the sound of London they're they're coming for you what do you mean they're coming for me they're coming for you they're not coming for me I've only ever been arrested once yeah do you want to recap that I I was uh, there yeah he was there this is true. I think I've said this before. I was arrested. Most embarrassing reason to be arrested. Wasn't that embarrassing? Yeah. It, it, he got arrested for speaking on his phone in the quiet carriage. <laughs> Too loudly. That's, uh, let's put that out there. And then what happened? I was arrested, taken off the train, handcuffed and put against the wall in Peterborough. Uh, uh, What's wrong with Peterborough? Nothing. It's lovely. I do. I really like Peterborough. Anyone from Peterborough in the audience? No, because they're, they're from London. They live in London, Francis. That's why they're here. They haven't driven from Peterborough to come watch a live podcast, have they? Yeah, we don't know. But I was handcuffed against this, this wall, uh, handcuffed like that, and, and I turned round and I was looking round at, at the train. Francis was, had his head out of the train window, and I went, Francis, help me. And he went, what can I do? <laughs> and the train just pulled away. <laughs> he just left me being arrested on the platform. I... I had places to be. And then what did you do? And then I said to him, I said to Francis, I went, Francis, hang on a second. W- why didn't you have me? He went, don't worry, I, I wrote a strongly written letter to the police force. That's true, actually, I did. <laughs> complaining about then it. Then they asked me if I wanted to file a proper report and it was too much paperwork, so. <laughs> oh, we haven't even done the intro. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Private Parts Podcast. So this is where we read the most intimate and sordid details of our lives. That was probably the longest beginning we've ever had on a podcast. Yeah, uh, thanks to you. I thought it was quite funny and interesting and decent as an intro goes. Yeah, it was quite a long story of, of yours. Well, I think the whole point of this podcast is it's narratives throughout our lives. That's yeah. what it is. Well, um, I think let's just get into the meat of the uh, podcast. Which is what? That we're doing this podcast <laughs> and it's all going to be amazing. <laughs> and you guys have a lot to look forward to. I love, that you're, I love that you're preempting loads of things. And there is a prize giveaway. Yeah, there is a prize giveaway. Um, I don't know if it's actually you guys in the audience are eligible to win. No, they're not. They're it's not just uh, the people who are watching. Yeah, it's everyone. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. You. C- I don't know if they're booing or trying to scare us in slow motion. <laughs> 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 but what is what is very interesting is that everyone who is watching on our. Uh, on our YouTube channel, on our, our Instagram, you can win a Samsung Galaxy phone. Completely ten. Not, not, not ten of them. They can't win Samsung ten of them. Samsung Galaxy 10S. Is it? I don't know. Have you just guessed a phone? Is that what... Have you, have you just guessed it? Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You, you've now gone to the script. But you can. You can win a, ga- a Galaxy Samsung phone. It's very exciting. Thanks to ID Mobile, who are lovely sponsors of this podcast. So thank you, guys. Um... And we have a little thing, because Francis, did you know that uh, today's episode is sponsored by ID Mobile? I did, right? yeah. You did know that? I didn't, actually. You d- oh, you didn't? Are you reading from the script? Is that what you're doing that we no, have to no, do I right now? Yeah, I, I, it actually uh, it so slipped wha- my mind, I guess. 
basically the big point is what we're going to do is we're going to ask the question of the week okay and then we're going to ask our viewers to go and enter the competition by commenting with their answers on the private parts youtube or private parts instagram streams so everyone head over the na head over there now and you can win a samsung galaxy phone if you get the answer it's right it's a really nice phone actually yeah that was not our, even out yet. That was our very awkward bit to try and do. So, Francis, what is the question of the week? All right. The question of the week. Yeah, go, buddy. I want to hear Ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen. Is it relatable to everyone? Yeah. You sure it is? Yeah, everyone's going to have at least been on something with these. Oh, I know what it is. I know. It's fairground rides. No. Okay. Dodgems. No, no. It's a fairground ride, isn't it? No. The question of the week is mm -hmm. what... Who, what is the largest? <laughs> he does this every, there's two things that Francis does which are super annoying. One is he, he says that all the time. He goes, what, who, okay, fine, yep, that. The second one is, is you go, Francis, are you ready to say something? He goes, yep, I'm ready. And then he's not ready for another four minutes. Hey, someone called your name there. Uh. <laughs> they did? Okay, go on, what's the question of the week? The question of the week is, what is the international... What is, <laughs> what is the biggest producer of tires internationally? Michelin. Michelin, is that your guess? Michelin. Michelin is your guess? Is that it? Is that right? Oh, you're not going to tell me, are you? Well, I'm, I can't tell you. Okay, I don't think it's Michelin. I reckon the biggest producer of tires worldwide. Yeah, worldwide. Okay. Um, I reckon it's actually going to be Toyota. Toyota? You think so? Yeah. All right. Well... How is that relatable to today as well? Why don't you do something about live concerts or live festivals or live podcasts? Well, I will get back to you on that because that's the question and that's where I'm finishing. Okay, very simple, guys. So if you know the answer to the question of the week, uh, Instagram us on private podcasts or go onto our YouTube page, um, private pod parts as well, uh, and give us the answer. And someone at the end of the show is going to win a Samsung Galaxy phone completely for free thanks to ID Mobile. Oh, I feel like someone's already on our Instagram back there. <laughs> I can hear my own voice. Um, Francis, what we like to do, and everyone in the audience, uh, the whole reason behind this whole podcast was the fact that we, and uh, Francis and I, uh, like to write diaries. So you are very lucky and you're welcome uh, because right now is my diary. Normally we have a little bit of a jingle there, but obviously it's live, so we don't. <coughs> well, I'll do it. Wait, okay, what, how does it okay go? let me do that. What does the jingle go? How does it go? Well, you make it up. We'll do it one more time. Here we go. So please, everyone, boom, get ready. Boom, no, you boom, don't start boom. the jingle before I... You don't, you don't start the jingle before I've actually got right. into my diary. Okay. How, so ready? <clears throat> mm. So please, everyone, get ready for my diary. You, you knew you were going to jump in. I could see your lips about to go before I'd even finished. Yeah, but it starts a bit gone. No, it doesn't start. It starts as soon it's as I finish. It's a sound bed. No, it's not a sound bed. As soon as I finish, then it starts. It's a technical term. Okay, here we go. Please, everyone, get ready. I can sense you're ready to go. Just, just relax and smooth into it. Please, everyone, get ready for my diary. You meant to do the jingle. Go on then. <laughs> Is that the jingle? <laughs> when boom, ba doom, boom, 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 ba doom, ba boom, ba doom, boom. Go on. No, you're not going to do it over when I'm talking. Wednesday. That's what. <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> Let me just do it. Can I just do my diary? You're going to like this one, Francis, I promise you. Yeah, you're going to love it. All right. Well. It's about the Brits that I uh, hosted the other day, so. I watched that actually. <laughs> good for you. I watched, <laughs> I watched your. I uh, watched a bit of your thing. Okay, did you? What yeah. did you think? It was good. Yeah. Well, yeah. let me let me read it's my diary. Let me read my diary, and then we can <laughs> talk about it afterwards. <clears throat> Ready, everyone? Here's my diary. Wednesday. So it's the night of the Brits, and yes, yours truly, your homeboy, your badass mofo. Yes, I'm talking about me. I'm hosting the red carpet with the lovely Yasmin Evans. Yeah. Yeah. I basically had to stand on the red carpet with a microphone and try and grab as many people as I can. You're used to that, I suppose. Not physically grab, Francis. Then as that would look weird, but persuade them to come and talk. Basically, I'm the Ryan Seacrest of the Brits world. Oh, really? Yeah. So I said there's mud on my chinos. Or <laughs> Wait, you're more worried about the mud <laughs> on your chinos than you're worried about my diary. All right, go on. <clears throat> the evening came... My suit was ready. I was looking smart. I walked onto the red carpet and looked at my stand. It was like an old school western. 
I was the new sheriff in town. I cowboyed, walked over. You were the new sheriff of the yeah. Brits? Yeah, yeah. I was the sheriff of the Brits. Wait, who's the old sheriff of the Brits? <laughs> Graham Norton. <laughs> yeah. Him and Carnaby Street, and he's all, he's all over my shit, Graham Norton is. I cowboyed walked over, which is cowboyed the, walked. Yeah, it's the name of the gate. You don't, you won't know because you're not a drama, you're not a thespian. You don't know what cowboyed walk is. Do you, do you know how to cowboyed walk? Um, I can, no. Okay, I cowboyed walked over. The cameras went live, and I was ready to draw on any on any unexpected celebrity walking past. Do you like <coughs> the way I did that? It's like a with a pen. No, <laughs> no with my microphone. With a sharpie. <laughs> Not with the I wanted their signatures. <clears throat> <coughs> that was a moment of honesty there. <laughs> I was ready to draw on, uh, on any unexpected celebrity that walked past. I met Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Alan. Lily. Bay. James. James Bay. Hold on the river. You know that one? I know that guy. Mm. And Capaldi. Yeah, that's right. Yes, Lewis Capaldi, the man of the moment, the Scottish lad who not only was nominated for Best Newcomer, but also writes the best, saddest songs around. Mm -hmm. We joked, laughed, became best friends in a second. I had visions of him being my best man at my wedding. And then I said something that changed all that. I congratulated him on his nomination and as best mates do, said my fingers were crossed for his success. Oh, I saw that. I saw that happen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then he had already lost. Shh. Yes, Francis, you just ruined my diary. <laughs> he turned to me and gave me a look of disgust and confusion. Why are you talking about? Us, <laughs> fresh and chaps. What are you talking about? He said in his deep gla- <laughs> He said in his deep Glaswegian accent. Your nomination, I replied. Good luck. How can, I, how can I have good luck, mate? I looked confused. But before I could say anything, he said, the award has already happened yesterday, mate, and I didn't win. <laughs> and he walked off. Great start to my Brit's career. Wait, his, his, so his award was the day before? Yeah, he, so basically what happened was, is I kept saying to him, I was like, good luck, mate. You know, this is going to be uh, amazing. You're going to win this. Fingers crossed. He was like, I can't win Maybe it. Maybe you should text him now and just say, hey, mate, good luck in your... Uh, uh, yeah, with your nomination. Yeah, but then he was like, well, I haven't won it, which was, wasn't good. And then every single person that came up to me said I looked like Jedward, which was really... Oh, it was your hair. Yeah, my hair. I went for a new look. All right, I had this, so... Yeah, it was, but the look had been done by Jedward. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> Just to let everyone know uh, that, uh, no, it hadn't been done by Jedward. Basically, what happened was is that, look, I, it's, it's a pretty private scenario, but I had a hair transplant. Right. Oh yeah, we know this. Yes, yeah. I know. And so I'm it's quite not private anymore. Okay. Well, I'm quite proud of my hair. All right. And so what we decided to do is, that's me and my stylist. So you got you're getting less than two and a half percent for your or out of ten. For what? For your Scottish accent. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Ra- you rated, they rated you two and a half percent. Three one. Three point three. Firstly, if you're going to read things off the two, eye, mate, it was awful. Says Cal Dove. <laughs> Francis, Francis, firstly, can you just explain this? If you're just saying words into the pod, people listening to this are going to go, he's gone mad. You're just like, you have to explain what you're reading no, no, that I'm, from. No, I'm, I'm reading it. They know that I'm rating your, I'm reading ratings of your Scottish accent. Oh, on the YouTube channel, right? Yeah, though? yeah. But anyway, so I looked like Jedward, all right? That's what's supposed to happen because we did all my hair. But also the most annoying thing is, is that they always like, everyone tries to make you wear makeup. Don't they? When they, they do, they try and make you wear That's makeup. That's what you found the most annoying thing. <laughs> yeah. And it you lo- wear makeup on a daily basis. No, I don't. I don't wear Yeah, I you do. No, I don't. I never wear makeup. You just asked, we were just at a photo shoot, and Jamie was like, Francis, do you need any bronzer or. <laughs> exactly. We were doing a photo shoot, so of course that's when you're going to wear. Of course you brought your bronzer. No, it, uh, look, I had a. I had a uh, photo i didn't have a photo shoot, but you have to wear like makeup and things like that. But it looked like I had dumped my head in foundation it looked like i'd gone over to a vat or foundation oh, what, at, at the brits yeah you're wearing loads of me <laughs> i know that's what i'm talking about what do you think i'm talking it. about i'm not just talking about something random uh, yeah yeah you were wearing a lot of makeup that's one of the things that i noticed other than your jedward hair your makeup mm-hmm. and um were you, were you were you sporting something of a fake tan or i was sporting a little bit of a fake tan yeah yeah but that's whatever hey listen also we got a big shout out to id mobile their home-brewed wine. It was quite a... 
that I'm opening for all of you uh, listeners out there. Listen to this. God, everyone knows this noise. This is the, just the noise that you love, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds like cracking knuckles, <laughs> isn't it? Ooh. Or this noise. Listen to this. Here we go. I'm pouring it in my ID Mobile mug. Thank you. This is really unsubtle, Jamie. I'm not. Well, I'm not. It's not anything. I just do. I think thanks to ID Mobile for sponsoring the episode. <laughs> hey, listen. Also, this is one of my favourite noises in the world as well. Listen to this. God, that's sweet. Yeah. Oh, every single problem disappears when <laughs> that goes down. Actually, that's terrible advice. Yeah. Hey, all of you kids out there listening, drink wine. It makes you feel better. <laughs> It's true, it does. It makes you feel on top of the world. Kids. Well, not kids. If you're over 18, you don't need ID. <laughs> Drink. But if you're under 18, you call need... Call me. A, you, you're like, what? You, no, no, no. <laughs> what were you about to say? Call me. I love that you started on that because you didn't know if you were allowed to say it or not. And then you thought, fuck it, I will. <laughs> oh, my God, I like that. Um, Wait, so, so how else was the Brits? Was there anything else that happened? It seemed like quite a fun, crazy night. Uh, so, yeah. Didn't you? I, I saw a really great story of you snogging Anne-Marie's cheek. I did not. Yeah. Okay, that, no. Firstly, that did not go down very well. Um... <laughs> So I have a beautiful girlfriend uh, called Eloise and we're at the Brits and we're having a lovely fun time and uh, I did an Instagram video of me kissing Anne-Marie on the cheek. Well, it was more like snogging her cheek. <laughs> I did not <laughs> snog her cheek. I kissed her on the cheek. Oh, but, yeah. But I've been... I've been With tongue? No, it was no... I didn't lick her cheek. It wasn't like I licked her cheek at all. Didn't you? No, I didn't lick her cheek. I just, uh, I just kissed her cheek. But I've been in the... A little bit of trouble this week, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, with the relationships and things like that. It's been a little bit of a tricky time because uh, we went out. I went out on the weekend on Saturday night, and I have this thing where sometimes where I think it's a uh, a uh, good idea to uh, kiss Amory on the cheek. No, not to kiss Amory, <laughs> but to get sometimes naked. I think it's a quite a funny idea, and. Elle gets really upset when I get naked, of course, because why wouldn't she get upset? But then She's, She doesn't see the funny side. But then she was like to me, if you go out tonight, Jamie, make sure you don't get naked. And I went, okay, I won't. won't. And then she, I suddenly got a message from her, opened up, and it was a screenshot of someone's Instagram of me naked <laughs> on the table. So it wasn't very good. Where did you get naked? Well, it was at my friend's birthday, and I didn't get naked. I'd gone to my boxes, but still, it's, you know, halfway there. Yeah. <laughs> wasn't very good anyway right. <laughs> we're gonna play a lovely little game right now which is called losing control which i'm very excited about oh, yeah yeah and we have a nice little script now here we go <clears throat> you ready for this Don't francis say that there's a script because then it's okay well they can see us the audience can i know but the people on the podcast id are. mobile are all about keeping customers in control of their spend with awesome things like being able to roll your unused data over to the next month for free inclusive roaming in 50 destinations and the ability to set and adjust your bill capping li limit and you can change your data plan monthly to suit your needs with flexible 30 second day sim only deals you can pretty much do anything to stay in complete control how good is that francis it's one of the best things i've ever heard <laughs> yeah you like that <laughs> so and i've heard a lot of great things what is the greatest thing you've ever heard in life probably mind control you think mind... Sorry, you're not sticking to the script. That didn't even make sense. <laughs> it is in the script. Is that why you just said it? Okay, but I think there's a... Uh, we have... Um, we're going to play this game, all right? Uh, but there's a little bit of a catch to the game because, you know, in respect for ID Mobile and all these kind of <laughs> things, okay. it's bigger up respect to ID Mobile. We're going to play a game where we're going to swap each other's phones over. Okay? No, I don't want to play this game. Yeah, you are, you are, we are going to play this game. We're going to swap each other's phones over and we get to message someone from our phone book. Uh, within reason, we can veto some people and things like that, but within reason, message anything we want and we just have to go with it. Do you see what I mean? So okay. it's called losing control of your phone. Right. Okay. So uh, are you, who are you going to... Who's the, who are you going to veto? Uh, no one. I don't veto anyone. All right. But you can do mine first. Okay, I'll, tell you, I'll do yours first. Let me do yours okay. first. All right. So what we're doing, ladies okay, and gentlemen... Don't, don't text Anna Subri because we're not... I don't 
Yeah. He doesn't know Johannes Fiedler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, politician, what? <laughs> okay, here we go. You ready? Okay. Okay, I'm going to message... I'm ge- Oh, hello. No, I'm going to message... I'm going to message Proudlock. Okay. Proudlock? Yeah. I'm going to message Proudlock. Right, Who's here we go. Message? Wait, we're going to do me first, though. Hold on, we're doing me first. Pamela Anderson. <laughs> Don't message Pamela Anderson. <laughs> How do I do the face ID? No, don't hold it. You don't have face ID. Francis, how do I get to your, to your messages? Here we go. So is yeah. this it here? Okay, here we go. I'm going to message... Uh, I'm going to message Proudlock. What's your password? We'll do that in a second. I'm going to message Proudlock. <laughs> All right, here All right. we go. Okay. Um, hey, mate. Hey, mate. Hope you're well. <laughs> Bit of a random one. But I'm moving back to London in the next couple of months and looking for a place to live. (laughs) I know you're building a house, so I was hoping there might be a spare room for me. (laughs) I won't get in the way of filming your next YouTube series, Crib to Casa. (laughs) Would that be okay? homie all right sent that's very believable <laughs> it's believable i want you to live with proud lock okay, okay my turn go what's your password well i'm not going to tell you my password am i what is it i'll just do my face recognition thing here we go sometimes it just doesn't work here we go right here we go because you put pretty much botox in <laughs> I, don't, I don't have botox and i don't do that okay ready you run out of botox no i don't wear botox right here we go so okay so all right let me, no, let me no, no, no. okay i'm going to message yeah, but you have pamela anderson no you're not messing <laughs> francis you're not messing pamela anderson why not no you're not messing pamela anderson do you, someone pamela anderson gave me her number <laughs> <laughs> so, you can't message pamela anderson on our podcast okay, all right okay all right where is it no you don't go on to messages go on to whatsapp Okay, what's up? Yeah, Wait, what okay, so, all right, shall I do Spencer? Yeah. <laughs> okay, do Spencer. Okay, do Spencer. Okay. Okay, go for it. All right. Mm-hmm. This Spencer. Can I borrow Teddy? <laughs> it's his son. <laughs> for an afternoon for some Instagram stories. <laughs> Trying to up my engagement. (laughs) Happy to pay you 50 quid if necessary. (laughs) Need brands to think I'm more fatherly. (laughs) Etc. Did you hear all that? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I said... Spenny, can I borrow Teddy for an afternoon for some Instagram stories, trying to get some more engagement? Oh, Francis, he just replied. Uh, ha- happy, he said, are you joking? <laughs> Francis, what are you going to reply? Just, just play, this is weird, just play. I'm not even joking. By the way, we can show everyone this is true. Show everyone this is true. He's uh, also, weirdly, Spencer in my phone is under uh, Zach Efron, which is quite odd. Okay, what have you said? 50 quid. Francis, you can't, you can't just reply saying 50 quid to him, that's it. You can't just do that. Okay, 100. <laughs> Francis, he hasn't responded to the 50 quid. Francis, he hasn't... Sp- oh, my... I'm going to... All right. Well, Pradlock hasn't responded. So Let's just do that. Let's just see boring. what happens. Okay, we're going to leave it for the moment. God, I think it's just... Uh, <sighs> we okay, have to- read... Okay. <laughs> we read have... Up. Okay. Okay, we've got some great Instagram comments. From one from Carl Dove. Yeah, tell he, me. Oh no, he said he should have messaged Tom Allen. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. Who? Which other ones do we have? We have some Instagram messages we do on my Instagram over here. We have one uh, that says from Daisy Doer, get the cookies out. Don't know what that means, Daisy. Tom, Andy, Francis, please message Frankie or Pamela. Didn't happen. From we also got one from Christy. Look, everyone wants you to message Pamela Anderson, but I don't think that's a very good idea to do Shall it. Shall I call her? Yeah. 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 Shall we? Okay, look, we'll Shall call. We FaceTime her. 
Look, we'll try and call Pamela Anderson. Why not? That's a, should she we actually she's do She's probably busy, though. If she picks up, this is going to be the most embarrassing thing. <laughs> if I, FaceTime. I'm not going to FaceTime Pamela Anderson. Why not? Well, okay, firstly, let's understand something. When she, if she does pick up and I FaceTimed her... I thought you guys were friends. We are friends, but I'm just, it's like I'm using her for her fame, <laughs> which we're not. We're way deeper than that. Okay? What? <laughs> we're not. What we are, are you implying? You're not implying anything. We just are. We're, we're just friends, all right? So if I FaceTime her right now and she picks up, yeah. imagine if she picks up, what do I say? Say, hey, I just wanted to get some, uh, some uh, respect from my, my podcast partner, Francis. All right, fine. Fair enough. All right, I'm ringing her. Here we go. This is Pam Ranson. Here we go. This is mental. <laughs> Can we get her on the podcast? Francis, sh she's about to be. I'll leave her a message. We're all so excited. <laughs> she really a glass blower. <laughs> <laughs> You need a lot of equipment to blow glass. Look, do you, do you, do you think that she's not picking up? Do you think she's? Do you think she's maybe? S the wireless customer you are calling is not available. Please try again later. Oh, oh, she's got a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> who who is? Who, if you could if you could go to dinner with anyone, right? I think right? she's going out with um, uh, Julian Assange, isn't she? Is that who she's going out with? Yeah. Do you know who that is? Yeah, I do. Who? It's Julian Assange. <laughs> what does he do? Lots of things. What, his hobbies? Do you want to know yeah, his hobbies? Yeah, what's his hobby? Uh, his hobby is... Tennis. No. <laughs> he likes lots of different things. Yeah, skiing. No, if you were going to go and have dinner with someone, right, if you could pick anyone in history you could go and have dinner with, who would you pick? Anyone in history? <laughs> who would you pick, Francis? Who would I pick? Anyone. Yeah. Anyone in the world. Who would you go? Um... Anyone in the world? Anyone in the world. What, right, like now? Well, not right this second, no, but if you had a, okay, fine, you had a week to prepare to go for dinner with anyone, a week to prepare, right. who would you go for dinner with? Maybe Channing Tatum. <laughs> <laughs> you, so, wait, out of everyone, everyone in the world, you would pick to go for dinner with Channing, Channing, Ta Channing Tatum. Channing yeah. Tatum. Mm. Why would you go for dinner with Channing Tatum? Just because I feel like maybe we're related or something. <laughs> okay, and how are you related in any way? Maybe he's, like, my half-brother. So you think that Channing Tatum is your half-brother? Who knows? I'm not, I'm not saying I think that. <laughs> I'm just saying it's possible. So, out of, so wait, let's just get the right. Out of everyone in the entire world you picked to go for dinner with Channing Tatum, I think you'd pick someone like Churchill, even though he's not alive. Oh, uh, you didn't say uh, uh, they could be... Yeah, but that's the whole point of the game. You're meant to pick anyone in history. All right, so I would say <clears throat> if they're dead... <laughs> we want to... <laughs> if they're dead, then maybe... Um, we're, we're, we're <laughs> I've always really liked Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt Damon's not dead. <laughs> oh, we had He's not dead. We uh, we had we had a Francis and I did a very funny podcast the other day. We actually had to cut this bit out, but it was very funny. I won't tell you who it was with, but uh, we were doing a podcast and we said to our guest, we turned to him and said, "Okay, look, if you're having your last meal on earth, if you're having your last meal on earth, what would you have to eat?" And our guest sat there and he thought, "Oh, I don't know." And Francis <laughs> turned to him and said, "Listen, mate, put yourself." Wait, what are you yeah, talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember not, it? No, no, yeah, th that's a funny joke, which we're not actually going to repeat. But um, <laughs> because we cut these things out for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> or the other one he said the other day, we were with this girl who um, we, were record we were recording. It was the best. We were recording with her. And she, uh, she said, oh, I have a very nice baby face. And I went, oh, I have a baby face as well. And Francis turned to me and said, where do you keep it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. Who's, who's been our favourite guest we've had on the podcast, would you say? Out of favourite everyone guest? Favourite guest. I guess ID Mobile, probably. <laughs> but apart from ID Mobile, who's been the best, would you say? Um, I couldn't possibly choose, but I think if we had Channing Tatum, he'd probably be the best. What, what is your obsession with Channing Tatum? I just don't get it. 
I just, I'm not, I think he's a great actor. I remember when I was uh, a lot younger, I had these weird obsessions over a lot of different people. <coughs> and one of my weird obsessions I had were over Jerry Hallowell. Oh, really? I was yeah. supposed to say Jerry Springer. <laughs> No, but it was, off, it was on Jerry Halliwell. I remember I used to have all these uh, posters of her on my wall, and yeah. and the other and the other person I had. Do you a want to put this ID Mobile T-shirt on? <laughs> Is that another? Do you want me to put it on? Yeah, I think. Yeah. No, I want to know who were you uh, when you were younger and you were <laughs> when you were. Don't throw that on the floor. I didn't want to. <laughs> Thanks, ID Mobile. When you were when you were younger. And yeah. you had your bedroom, okay, and you had your... Did you have bunk beds or did you have single beds? I had a uh, single bed and then, depending, it kind of grew as I grew up. Yeah, so it got bigger. But when you were younger, right, you had your single beds. I had these two yeah. bunk beds. Dude, this is so true. When I was a kid, right, I was so afraid of ants and spiders for some reason that I had this bunk bed and I couldn't sleep on the top bunk because I was so worried spiders and ants were going to fall on me in the middle of the night so I had to sleep on the the bottom bunk but also I had to put jars of water uh, on all like the four legs of the bed to put in there so I think that if ants or spiders were going to climb up it they would climb up into the jars and fall in the water right well I had a really troubled childhood I think yeah, but who were your people? Sounds very troubled. Who were your Who were your people that you really admired, and what were your posters on your wall growing up? Ben Affleck. <laughs> 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 and Charlie who else? Tatum. <laughs> what from Step Up? Is that yeah. what you used to love? Um, who was your Who was your first? Who was the first person you really liked? Uh, who was the first person I really liked? Mine. Um, do you know who mine? Oh, uh, um, the Cookie Monster. Out of everyone, you would have posters of Cookie Monster on your wall. And I had uh, Eeyore posters. <laughs> How was that? Oh, that's just weird, isn't that? <laughs> uh, so, so you were right. So it was like, right, boys, we're going back to mine tonight. You're six years wait, old. Oh, wait. No, no, I was like a kid. Yeah, and six. And I was really into Sesame Street. Yeah, okay, fine. So you're like, right, boys, we're going back to mine tonight. We're going to watch Sesame Street. That's what you used to say. Is yeah, that I didn't, yeah, no, I didn't. And you'd take them into your room, and they'd walk into your room, and instead of having, like, footballers on your wall... Or footballers? Yeah, or <laughs> you just had loads of footballers in your room. <laughs> but you'd, instead of having footballers on your wall, you would walk in, and there would be Sesame Street. Yeah, Sesame Street. And Eeyore. Eeyore. Yeah, I had this Eeyore... Um, I was way cooler than you. You walk into my room, I had Jerry Halliwell on my wall. Oh, well, and no, but I, I how old Jerry were you? Ha I was six. You were six? Six years old. Yeah. Do you know, this is true. I remember I went on holiday to... Actually, no, I did have a Baby Spice poster. <laughs> you did? But not... I don't know if it was a poster. It was kind of like a thing from mag a magazine. Oh, really? Yeah, like, yeah, well, like, a thing from a magazine. You just... Like you, ripped, so wait, you ripped out a, a, ma a Baby Spice from a magazine and stuck it on your wall. No, but I mean, we were all into the Spice Girls back then, right? Yeah, no, it's my first ever tape I had. But like, I was more into... Um, all Saints. I was going to All Saints. You were in. So, so you're All the, Saints. So the band that you liked when you were younger were All Saints. No, the band that I liked when I was younger was Hanson. <laughs> this is true, actually. Everyone he used to love Hanson more than anything. And actually, do you know what? I wrote a letter to Hanson when I was eight years old. Probably younger, actually. Probably seven. It's a bit more respectable. Um, uh, uh, and uh, I asked them if they needed a violinist. Because what they what didn't have one. And they never wrote me back. <laughs> and then, just recently, they released uh, their latest album called String Theory, which is a violin <laughs> album. <laughs> so they totally ripped me off. What, so you 20 think, years later. So, Francis, do you think that they read your letter, an eight-year-old boy's letter? And do they you think they just got that idea out of nowhere? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Go think on, they pull did. the other other one, mate. <laughs> I remember when I was I was seven years old and I went to uh, to Turkey to a thing called Club Med. Now I don't know if anyone knows what Club Med is or been to Club Med, but it's basically like a sort of uh, so I think it's like a posh it's like Butlins. It's like a posher version of Butlins, I would say. There's and you, you there's no like money or stuff like that. You just get given these <laughs> tickets. You get given these tickets and you pay with tickets. And every single day I would walk past this magazine stand. Because there was a Playboy magazine in it, and I was like obsessed with looking at this this Playboy magazine. And and then one day, what this guy who caught me looking, he said, "Oh, 
do you like Playboy? And I went, well, I was eight years old, so I thought, I oh, know. And, and he bought me the Playboy magazine. And what, the guy did? Yeah, the guy did. He bought it for me. And I took it back to my room, and I was reading it. In, in, well, you don't read it, do you? You just look at it. Yeah, yeah. But I was looking at this Playboy magazine, and my mum walked in. <laughs> and I just, she was like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, some guy gave me this Playboy magazine. So she took me around the whole of Club Med trying to find the guy that bought me the Playboy really? magazine. Yeah. <laughs> most embar- so That was one of the most embarrassing. The second most embarrassing thing happened that holiday as well. I was like eight years old, seven years old, and like the guys who were cooler, who used to like sail, sail the what are those little cat, <laughs> what is Boats. sail the little catamarans, you know those little fast ones. Yeah. The cool kids out there, they were like going clubbing and stuff. Toppers. They, yeah, they were going clubbing. They were, must have been like eleven years old, and they took me clubbing one night to like it was like a non-alcoholic club or whatever it was. Went there, and my mum in the middle of the night came in her nighty and got me out of the nightclub. She walked in like a fucking ghost, <laughs> and I and and this guy who I know called Gray came up to me and went, I "Think your mum's over there?" And I looked over at the door. And my mum was in her nighty walking well, towards. How old it. were you? Like eight, but like whatever. Let me be cool, mum. Let me fly. I remember the other time that so happened as well. Went downhill from there. Didn't go downhill. I remember I had uh, I went and did retakes um, at uh, a, a school in London after I failed my A levels, and. I had an exam the next you day. You failed your A-levels? Yeah, failed my A-levels. You would never guess, would you? No, I didn't. And what did you get in your A-levels? BCD. It's not really failing, is it? That's what I got after my retakes, actually. Oh, I wait, got so what did you get in the first one? CDD. But yeah. anyway, we moved past that. But I, uh, I, went, my, I had an exam the next day, and my mum said to me, she was like, right, Jamie, uh, you have to go to bed tonight. You have to be proper. You can't mess about, all these kind of things. And I went, no, I promise I won't. Swear to God, got an exam tomorrow morning. Uh, you have to be like normal, whatever. And I was like, okay, fine. So she she went back to um, t- went to sleep, and I for some reason we had like this. She had this garage with like a sort of sitting room area above it in London, which I would go and hang out in. And I decided I thought it was a good idea before my exam to go to uh, a nightclub, and they had to get tickets for these nightclubs. So I went to this nightclub and partied up, and I came home around three in the morning. Remember, my exam was the next morning, and I walked in. And I thought, don't worry, I'll just sleep in this little room above the garage my mum would never know and I opened the door and walked in and you know you used to have to print off those tickets that you would get to go to these like club nights right and on the stairs (laughs) was the printed off ticket and written it was where the fuck are you I mean I was like oh my god and I was with a girl at the time and I was hand in hand with a girl and I walked up the stairs and I went into the sitting area and again this ghost (laughs) got up from the sofa and it was my mum, <laughs> and I turned on the light, and then she got up, and I quickly turned off and just stood still, thinking she would never see me, <laughs> and she said, turn on the light, so I turned on the light, and she looked at the girl, and she said, go home, and the girl went home, and uh, that's the end and of the story. And you got BCD. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, Francis, we have that moment, that lovely moment, where we get to have your diary, oh. which is very exciting, so please, Francis, let's read your diary. Um, it's been a busy week this week. Oh, it has? Are we going to hear more about Jeremiah? Oh, I don't know. We'll I mean, have, have to wait and see. Francis's right. diaries are quite long. If you guys want to sit back and relax, just feel free. No, no, they're, they're, I'd Here rather they go. be uncomfortable. Okay. Be, while you listen, just be very uncomfortable. Right, here we go. Okay, I'm on. ready. So many pages of diary. Oh, there we go coming hey i told every single time this happens <clears throat> monday i've had a busy week this week i love how you said that before you started your diary you said that you already had a busy week and then you repeat it in the diary well that's what it says in the diary it's <laughs> reading the diary <laughs> okay go yoshi sales has seen a boost from this recent spell of exceptional spe- exceptional february <laughs> weather <laughs> <laughs> apparently the flowers think it's spring Wait, bl- what do you mean the flowers think it's spring? Is the that true? It's not true. Fla- how, do you, how, can you, how can you trick a flower into thinking it's spring? Uh, I don't know, make it hot? No, that's bullshit. So you're, so you're saying you're saying if I took a flower into my house and put the heating on loads... Yeah, and the sun, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the sun, isn't it? <laughs> that was one of the stupidest things I think I've ever said. Apparently the flowers think, think it's spring and have blown their pollen sacs prematurely. 
<laughs> Wait, was that just Monday? Uh, no, no. As have some of the bees who have been hard at work gathering nectar. But they will get a nasty shock when the weather turns and they have to rush back to the hive, alerting the other bees about the false alarm. They'll have to batten down the hatches for another month or so before the real spring arrives. <coughs> Why are you batting down the hatches? Because it's going to get cold again. It's not like a hurricane's coming. I don't know. Well, it's going to get cold. Bees are not uh, designed for the, the snow. Okay, but there's no going to be. There might not be any snow. Well, there might be. Yeah, but there might be. But you're not the weatherman. You're just preempting what you think. You're, you're guessing the weather. Hey, have we not covered this already? My psychic abilities at predicting snow. Francis thinks that he can predict the weather. It's the most banal thing. No, but I've thing. predicted snow the past two winters. No, no, you didn't predict it. Day. No, you didn't predict yeah, it. Yeah, I said tomorrow it's going to snow. Yeah, you guessed tomorrow. and it actually came true. That's not predicting it. You're just guessing. You're not predicting the weather. They'll have to batten down the hatches for another month or so before real spring arrives. <clears throat> Those bees and their beautiful, beautiful knees. Hey, I love ID Mobile as well, by the way. If only they knew how highly we all thought of their knees. Bees don't have knees. Yeah, they do. But how do bees have knees? They do. No, they don't have any bones. To them, they're just knees. <laughs> but to us, they're so much more. <laughs> they're the bee's knees. <laughs> That's all I've got for you guys. Is that the end of the diary? That's the end of my diary. Tuesday. I, I could just say Tuesday. but uh, yeah. So that was it. What is your obsession with bees? Where did that come from? Um, bees are so important to our ecosystem. But how? I know you say this all the time, but I don't understand. Well, because bees uh, pollinate our crops. They do? Yeah. So a bee goes to get nectar and it gets some pollen on its butt and it goes to the other flowers. Is there the a lorry in this... <laughs> in this in this room as well. I mean, it's the loudest thing I've ever heard. So wait, bees. So the bees pollinate. Yes, our crops. I get yeah. that. And and there's a there's a lot of um, uh, threats to the bees, uh, including honeybees. Uh, honeybee. In, uh, yeah, but all bees. Honeybee farming is also bad for the natural bee population. Well, anyway, I could go on for hours. But, uh, <laughs> but I don't think anyone's interested. No. But if you are, then <laughs> follow my blog on bees. Is that what you were gonna say? Yeah. <laughs> Listen to my bee podcast. <laughs> okay, but fine. But then, what? Okay, fine. What is your favorite animal in the world? Then, in insect, animal, whatever it is. Um, my favorite animal. Uh, I have a lot of favorite animals. Probably all of them, but I think maybe um, <laughs> polar bear. And why do you like the polar bear? Um, polar bears. I think they're amazing and big and uh, and white. <laughs> and, that, and that's why you like them. And I like, and I like them, yeah. Bears, basically, but I like white bears. <laughs> not for any. Uh, not, uh, <laughs> no, I just like the. I like the fact that they're like big, massive bears, and they're uh, they've got white, <laughs> actually see-through um, fur. They have see-through fur. It just appears white <laughs> at a distance. No, that's a lie. That can't be. That's true. So what do you mean they that's have see-through hair? They have see-through hair. It's see-through. You can, it's, it's translucent. So, and that's why it appears white. Yeah, I like polar bears. I like, um, uh, obviously, I love pangolins. Yeah, and, you do like uh, pangolins. That's very true. And uh, and I love um, bees. God, I, that, speaking of like bears and things like that, do you know who I met the other day who I think is so impressive? I know I mentioned in my diary, but Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, yeah. Oh, what my does God. What he have to I, do with bears? Well, just because he's a bit like a bear. Uh, he's you, th you, th you, think, you think of him like a bear? <laughs> I'm not thinking of him like a bear. No, I'm not, but he is. Do you call him, hey, bear? <laughs> no, I, no, I don't. I wouldn't say that to him. I'd say, hey, Hugh, how you doing, if I met him again? <laughs> but, he, but he knew my name. He knew my name. And, this, you know, at the Brits, he came up to me, and we didn't come up to me. We ushered him in. And he walked up to you me. You cornered him? No, I didn't corner him at all. I never cornered anyone in a room, ever. But Hugh Jackman walked in and uh, he said, he came up to me like this, Francis, and he went, Jamie, how are you doing? And that obviously means that he uh, was it's not... It's called Jamie. No, <laughs> it obviously means that he wasn't briefed on it, but he just, he knew obviously who I was, which is quite exciting. So that's right? like your dream come true is to be known to Hugh Jackman, isn't it? No, it's not my dream come true ever. I tell you, my, my dream, my dream at one point in my life was to be on stage, yes. And that would be probably next to someone like Hugh Jackman. I thought you were about next to someone like Hugh, you. <laughs> when you were younger, right, and you had all these dreams growing up, yeah, did you ever think that, you're, that you would be doing 
uh, what you're doing today, or did you have a complete? Well, the podcast didn't really exist <laughs> when I was younger. Did it not? No. When we're 18, they existed, though. Did they? I don't think. Yeah, because so, really. I remember when I was traveling around. I was traveling around like places. Yeah, like they might have just come on the scene when pod uh, when iPods came on the scene. Yeah. But I no, I remember when the first ever podcast came on. It was the Ricky Gervais podcast with Carl Pinkleton. I don't think that was actually the first, but it was one of the early ones. Yeah. Was it one of the early ones? Yeah. I remember doing. I was in. It was in a place called uh, uh, where was it? Mancora, Peru. I think uh, Mancora. Mancora. It was the top. It was the north. It was the north of Peru, and I was doing my traveling around, which I did for three months on my my lovely gap year. And uh, that was the first time it ever was introduced to podcasts. Was in this place. What were you about to say introduced to. What were we about to say? Something else, though. <laughs> what, 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 what are you going to say? I don't know. So I can't repeat it. <laughs> no, I did. I traveled around South America for three months, and uh, it was amazing. And you won't stop going on about it. No, I didn't. But this is where the whole idea for this podcast came from, was because that's where I wrote my diary. And that's where... I, that's the only thing that I've ever, ever actually... I've told you this before, that I committed to was my diary traveling around South America. And never, I, never a girlfriend or anything. No, I could, and, and girlfriends. <laughs> Them. But the uh, but it was where I actually wrote my diary, and I actually reread my diary the other day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cool. I've got this whole new thing. <laughs> I've got this whole new thing where I've decided that I'm going to start reading more books the entire time. So I read a book called Shoe Dog. Reading more books. Yeah, yeah. Because I read Shoe Dog, which is about like how Nike started, and then I went on and reread my diary, which is quite narcissistic. I don't think, I think that's of it. classified as a book. Is it, it is a book. It is a book. It has pages in it, and I wrote it. It's a book. Oh, so you're saying you've written a book? Well, I, I, it wasn't published, but it was still a book, I feel. It had a narrative, it had stories, it had different things going on. All right, okay. Yeah, and I, and I reread it. But you did South America as well, didn't you? Yeah, I've been to South America, Central America. What did you do traveling around? Yes, I, well, I went, uh, well, I've been down there on business, played polo down there. But did you not go there went on gap year as well? down there. No, I didn't go, I didn't take a gap year. Did you not? No. I thought you went traveling there for like three months. Yeah, no, but I uh, was went to Edinburgh and we have really long summers down there. So. Oh, so you didn't actually go travelling at all? Well, no, I did, but in my summer holidays during from Edinburgh. But if you could go, fine, if you could go now and travel anywhere in the world, where would you go and travel? What one place would it be? If we could go and do this podcast anywhere in the world, we would be like, right, let's go and do it tomorrow. Where would you take me? Great Grimsby. <laughs> Not kidding, you guys. Francis has this obsession with Grimsby. We, when we were doing Great our Grimsby. Is it, it, how is it? It's not called Great Grimsby. That's the official name. It's not. Is that, is that actually the official name of Great, Grimsby? Anyone from Grimsby in the house? Yeah. Yeah? Is no, you're, that can't be a trade. Hey. Are, you, are you lying? You're, not, you're actually from Grimsby? What are the fucking chances of that? That is <laughs> the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Is what is, why is that so hard to believe? Because there's like only... There's, there's people there's, from Grimsby, there's 87,000 of them. So out of the... Ho- okay, this is it, out of the so there's 60... Well, there's 72 million people that live in the UK. 72 million people that live in the UK. Hmm. There's 87,000 that people live in Grimsby. And two out of the 20 people that are sitting in this room today, well, two of them are from Grimsby. Did did you did he speak to you beforehand? Do you guys know Joe Barker? No. Oh, why would you? I mean, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but Francis grew this huge obsession with. Do you guys know Lloyd Griffith? Yeah, I see. Do you know him or don't know of him? No. Have you met? Of course, there's only eight thousand. I meet like eighty-seven thousand people a day. I just walk around and meet that many people. So do you know everyone there is to know in Grimsby? Not everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, see that yeah. would be. I've always had this vision. Sounds right? great. Yeah, it, I've always had this vision growing up that I've always wanted to like wake up in the morning, walk, yeah, walk outside my house, pick up the milk. Lewis Capaldi's just gone live. <laughs> should, I, should I click on it? Hey, Lewis. Um, I would want to go outside my, my flat, pick up the newspaper, right? Yeah. And like pick up the milk, say morning to the postman as he goes past, say hello to... Kathy, who lives next door. Kathy who? Griffin. <laughs> Kathy Griffin? Yeah, Kathy Griffin. She Who's lives Kath- Kathy Griffin? She lives next door to me, in my mind. And then, oh, hi, Phil. Have a good day. Uh, Phil who? Hamburger. <laughs> Phil, ha- hey, Phil Hamburger. Good luck, man. Good luck today, buddy. You're going to kill it. I just really want that. I feel like in Grinsby that happens. It does. 
So when you wake up in the morning, you walk outside. By the way, a lot of other stuff happens in Grimsby. Yeah, but hold on. To all of our listeners who who don't know about this, we're talking to someone in our audience. When you wake up in the morning, you go outside your house. Who's the first person you shout to across the road? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Fair enough. You got me there. Why is everyone shouting at each other in Grimsby? Oh, I get off my porch. Well, it's come to that time of the... uh, episode where i get to tell you all what the answer to the question of the week is mm-hmm. and uh, do we have any i don't, I don't want to ask you if you're going to guess because you might say the answer does anyone know in the audience does anyone know or they can guess what do you guys think in the audience anyone know at all no one no do you know lego lego lego, lego is the answer are you s- hang on a second lego, lego produces 70 percent of the world's tires 316 million a year. That can't be right. Yeah. Big congratulations. To <laughs> did you did you go- did you Google that? Yeah, yeah, you Google it. Well done. I would have lied about that if I was you. I would have gone no. I just did it off the top of my head. How is Lego? How does Lego do and that? What, I'm going to read the uh, so the the winner. Can you wait? Just explain quickly how Lego does that. Lego don't make tires. Lego do make tires. They make the most tires out of any other company in the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But what for their toys? For their toys, yeah. Not for actual cars. Yeah, but that's oh ch- yeah, obviously I knew that. Okay, I just don't. You can't. That's cheating. No, yeah, that it. is. So the the winner of the um, Samsung Galaxy Ten mm-hmm. S. Ten Ten S. Ten. No. S10. <laughs> Samsung Galaxy S10. Can you build it up a bit better than that? The winner of the Samsung Galaxy S10, courtesy of ID Mobile, is Faye Freeman. Oh! <laughs> well done, Faye. Faye. Well done, You've Faye. won. Congratulations, Faye. Oh, Faye, thank you. Uh, so much for uh, guessing that right. How did she guess that right? She probably Googled it as well. I don't think anyone no, would have got that right. They're people just, got that right. Do you think so? Yeah. They would have done? Yeah, people got it right. Hey, so I mean, because it's an answer that people might know. Yeah. Well, well done to Faye. Hey, listen, Francis, what have you thought about our live podcast? Sitting here chatting to you for an hour. Um, three minutes left. Yeah, I know there's three minutes left, buddy. That's why I'm killing time right now. Why are you killing time? Uh, why don't we just, you know... Take some questions from the audience. No, no, we're not going to take questions from so the audience. Que- questions from the audience. No, Francis, we can't. Okay, uh, any questions? <laughs> oh, As there is a question. You there, what, what's your question? Did Spencer oh, reply? Sp- yes, Spence- he did reply. He said, are you joking? Yeah, and after then he that, didn't reply anything afterwards. Re- yeah, what about Proudlock, Francis? Did he reply? Has he replied? Proudlock hasn't replied. Boring. Do you think Brownlock is sitting there looking at his phone going, hell fucking no. I don't know. I feel like I should say this was a joke. No, no, no. You can't do that. That's unfair. You have to, whatever he responds, you then have to post on your story. That's the, fir- that's the, the truth right. of it. So if anyone wants to find that Any out. Any other questions? I love that you're just asking the audience for questions. Why don't you ask me a question? Questions? 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 Why, why don't you ask me a question? What's a question? Ask me a question. Anything you want. Anything in your anything in your wildest dreams you can ask me right now. Go for it. If you've had one question in your life to ask me, what is it? Um <laughs> Can he have Yeah, you can because she just regged me. You can have it hundred percent. Do it afterwards without a doubt, you can have it. hundred percent. Um I don't know what questions I mean What have you always wanted to know about me? We've been best friends for many years, you and I. We've lived together. That's true. We've been through wars together. We've been through troubling times together. You've helped me cook pancakes when I had mumps. That's true. You've helped me through breakups. That's true, yeah. You've helped me through good times. Yeah. (laughs) So what is the question you want to ask me? The question I want to ask you today is what county <laughs> you're not you're asking me you're asking a question back at me what county is grimsby in <laughs> why would you do that what county is grimsby in id mobile could give you a big shout Yorkshire. out guys sure you're texas <laughs> you're like lincolnshire lincolnshire 
Well, you got it right because the people from Grimsby told you. <laughs> uh, right, everyone, we've got to give a big, sh- big shout out to ID Mobile. Thank you so much for uh, this amazing podcast for sponsoring us. You guys kick ass. Every single you person guys in rock. the audience, thank you so much for being here we on you. your Tuesday evening. You guys rock as well. We kind of got through it. We did okay. We spoke for an hour. You guys are awesome. Um, Thanks so much for coming and listening. And to all of our listeners who are out there who uh, tuned in, all of the listeners who listening to this right now, you guys are great. To our winner, to our winner Faye Freeman Faye Freeman you want a Samsung S10 Galaxy phone thanks to ID Mobile you rock guys thank you so much have a lovely evening we'll see you soon give it up